Pine Island Ridge. It's quite literally our backyard. We walk on the ridge nearly every day and have seen just how beautiful and surprising it can be. As we've grown more and more attached to this beautiful place, we wanted to learn more about it, how it came to be, some of the history behind it, and what its future might be. We've learned a lot about this ridge and we'll share that in this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll learn something interesting you didn't know before about our backyard. Pine Island Ridge is in Broward County, Florida, in the town of Davie. This ridge, it's an old place with a lot of history. One of three islands in a chain that included an island in nearby Long Key, as well as an island in Dania, and was originally formed about 100,000 years ago from sand dunes created by the Atlantic Ocean. Sea levels continued to fluctuate a lot, especially in the most recent ice age, about 20,000 years ago. But eventually, the Florida Peninsula emerged out of the sea, and an ancient barrier island became instead a sandy inland ridge. Then, about 5,000 years ago, when the Everglades formed, it once again became an island, but this time, instead of being surrounded by ocean, it was surrounded by inland, fresh water, and a river of grass. So I'm standing right now on the highest point of natural elevation in Broward County. It's on Pine Island Ridge, and it's a staggering 29 feet above sea level right here. So the very first people to live here and experience these kinds of dizzying heights were the ancient Tequesta Indians. The Tequesta covered all of Southeast Florida, from Boca Raton all the way down to Key West. Archaeological surveys have confirmed that sites within Pine Island Ridge were hunting camps of the ancient Tequesta Indians and date back at least 3,000 years. Some sources say as much as 5,000 years. It's incredible to think about just how long people have lived here. I've always been somewhat awestruck by the ancient ruins in Greece, and those go all the way back to the first and second millennia BC. Well, here we are on Pine Island Ridge, where we know the Tequesta lived and thrived at that same time. Then the Spanish arrived, sometime in the mid to later part of the 16th century. Interestingly enough, the Tequesta had already heard that when the Europeans show up, it's not going to be good. And the next couple hundred years were not good for the Tequesta. And by the 18th century, most had died off. Some from slavery, but most from disease, especially smallpox, which was just devastating to the Tequesta. About that time, Seminole Indians had migrated south from Georgia and what few remaining Tequesta there were found themselves in conflict with the Miccosukee tribe. Overwhelmed, the few remaining Tequesta found asylum in Cuba and migrated there, integrating themselves into that culture which is kind of interesting when you think about the immigrants who came back to Florida from Cuba. Perhaps some of that ancient Tequesta blood has come back home.
So after thousands of years, the Tequesta were gone, and the Seminoles were now the sole inhabitants here on Pine Island Ridge. It's certainly easy to imagine a spot like this just 250 years ago with people living, hunting, and playing here. But by the first half of the 1800s, we find the Seminole tribe in conflict with the U.S. government in what became known as the Seminole Wars. The second of those wars, which started in 1835, was basically President Andrew Jackson making a land grab by removing the Seminoles from a reservation the government had set up for them just 10 years earlier in central Florida to Indian lands in what is now Oklahoma. During that second Seminole War, Pine Island Ridge had become a refuge for the Seminole Indians. Since the island was in what was at the time uncharted Everglades, where the U.S. military had never set foot. So it seemed like a pretty secure place. It's March 5th. 1838, and appointed by President Jackson, Major William Lauderdale, he's that fellow up there in the horse, arrives in the area along with his battalion of Tennessee volunteers. He's got one mission, get the remaining Seminole out of South Florida. He's up against, however, a formidable and a cunning opponent in one Abiaka, also known as Sam Jones. Abiaka was a Miccosukee medicine man and a leader who had one of his primary residences on nearby Long Key. This statue of him symbolically pointing west and deeper into the Everglades is here at Treetops Park. Abiaka and his fellow warriors were repeatedly besieged by U.S. government forces right here on Pine Island Ridge, trying to corner and capture them, but they never did. The last battle of the Second Seminole War that was here on Pine Island Ridge was on March 23, 1838. The Indians and their leader, Abiaka, escaped harm as Abiaka took his people deeper into the Everglades and basically vanished. However, their hasty retreat forced them to leave all their possessions behind, weakening their ability to survive in large groups. The fact remains to this day Abiaka and the Miccosukee never surrendered to the U.S. military. They did come back to live on the ridge years later, but as the Everglades around them was drained, they were eventually forced to move. But today, overlooking Pine Island Ridge, less than five miles away on the Seminole Reservation, is that guitar-shaped hotel part of the Seminole Empire bringing in more than $525 million annually in dividends to the tribe. Without Abiyaka having saved his people from being taken to Oklahoma in that Indian resettlement, I can't imagine a scenario where that hotel would be here today. So as I mentioned, the Seminoles did actually come back eventually and occupied Pine Island Ridge on and off until the early 1900s. But in 1905, the newly elected governor of Florida, Napoleon Bonaparte Broward, believed that if big canals were carved out of the Everglades between Fort Lauderdale and Lake Okeechobee, that this would drain the Everglades and provide rich farmland, which in turn would attract settlers to the area. Basically, at that time, everything that was west of where I-95 is today was uninhabitable swamp, including, of course, Pine Island Ridge. So, following Governor Broward's plan, Florida sold off parcels at $2 an acre 
and the money was used to drain and channel the water out, a plan that didn't really work all that well. But it was just good enough to attract, a year later in 1906, a millionaire named R.P. Davy, who bought 27,000 acres and took the drainage issue one step further by constructing many smaller irrigation and drainage canals. He then sold off 10-acre parcels through advertisements around the country. Other companies did the same thing, and this is how many of Davy's early residents bought their land. Makes me wonder how many were a bit surprised when they actually got here. Anyway, the town was known as Zona at the time because a number of the area's first settlers were coming from the Panama Canal Zone, and it reminded them of Panama. It wasn't until 1925 that the town of Davie was first established. It was sometime in the 1920s that Ian Belcher of Belcher Oil Company bought Pine Island Ridge and much of the land around it. And soon the area was all orange groves and cattle grazing. By the late 1950s, the Belchers were among the largest citrus producers in West Broward, with groves covering some 620 acres. Ian Belcher died in 1968, and the family sold off their land, including Pine Island Ridge, to the real estate developer Sea Ranch Properties in 1985, who started development of Pine Island Ridge Country Club and Forest Ridge. And soon, the ridge was surrounded by single-family homes. In 1989, the ridge was purchased by the state of Florida for just a little over $10 million. The state then leased the property to Broward County for management and maintenance responsibilities. And today it's managed by the county and the staff at Treetops Park. The current lease to Broward County started in 1995 and has a term of 50 years. Hey, 2045 will be here before you know it. Broward County purchased two additional parcels to complement the park property. In 2003, the most northern parcel of just under an acre was purchased utilizing Broward County's 2000 Safe Parks and Land Preservation Bond dollars. A second parcel, just over an acre, located south of Southwest 23rd Street and just south of the northern parcel, was added to Pine Island Ridge in 2015 in a land swap with Raleigh Marine Service Company. Along the sidewalk on the northern border between the original ridge and the 2015 parcel, there's a town of Davy sign that has me confused, saying this is private property. According to the Conservation Management Plan, it's not private property, but purchased by Broward County in 2015. I'm wondering if, since it's still fairly recent in 2015, the town of Davies just never taken the sign down. In the current conservation management plan, the county has also identified two additional parcels that it would like to purchase if they were made available. One is the 22-acre parcel owned by Pine Island Ridge Country Club to the north, and the other is the nine-acre lake owned by the Central Broward Water Control District on the west side of the ridge. In both cases, the county believes these parcels would enhance the property and expand portions of the ridge habitat that are protected. As anyone who has walked the ridge will tell you, it's a beautiful place and it's well maintained by the staff at Treetops Park. This ridge is a xeric hammock, which means it's an evergreen forest on well-drained, dry, sandy soil, and it's listed as globally rare and imperiled by the Florida Natural Areas Inventory. There's no shortage of trees on the ridge, but the native canopy is primarily slash pine, 
saw palmetto, live oak, and red bay. Today, because of mowing in some of the open areas, the deep shade, and competition from other plants, the slash pine isn't able to regenerate itself naturally and has been getting a little help from the Park Service. A serious problem the ridge management has had to deal with are the invasive plants. Some of the more prominent invasive species include the bowstring hemp, pothos, and inch plant, all prolific throughout the ridge, and from time to time, you'll see crews from the county coming in to cut back on some of the invasive species. But it's a big job, and it never seems to end. Pine Island Ridge is an amazing resource to have right here in our backyard. It's an important archaeological site, historical site, and a habitat for many native plants and animals. It's important that we do everything that we can to help preserve it and protect it so that generations after us, as the many that came before us, can enjoy this unique piece of natural Florida. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned a thing or two about Pine Island Ridge. Thanks for watching. Thank you.